Greg Matthews and his brother planned a 10-day hunting trip into a remote area of Alaska. Saw one yesterday. It started out as the adventure of a lifetime. But on September 22, 2015, everything changed. Greg came face to face with a vicious grizzly bear. The attack was gruesome, but miraculously, Greg survived. In his book, Wild Awakening, Greg shares his remarkable story of survival and how a relentless animal actually healed his wounded heart. Joining me now is Greg Matthews. It's great to have you here. Thank it's great you, to Beth. have you anywhere after this <laughs> right. experience. Thank right. you for having me. What? Uh, I could relate to this because I come from a family of hunters, and I've watched my brothers and my dad hunt for years. But this trip that you planned for, um, I mean, you planned for a couple of years for this. You had yes, everything you could conceivably think of, which paid off later on. Yes, but it was amazingly planned for, and you and your brother were so looking for forward to this you had you were going to hunt moose yes. but you were concerned about wolves and grizzlies yes ma'am so what did you think when here you are you're out there your brother brothers making moose calls quite a distance away from you and suddenly you're confronted with not just a grizzly but a mama grizzly it was very concerning to say the least yeah and thank you for having me on <laughs> so i greatly appreciate it um, it was very, very concerning because when I looked up, I thought it was going to be fulfilling a dream of a big game hunt, hunting moose with a bow. And it turned out it was a grizzly. It was about eight and a half feet tall, 600 pounds. Oof. And to complicate even things even more, there were two sub-adult cubs right underneath her. And it was, uh, she was on me within seconds. It didn't take long at all for that uh, you know, encounter. Some, sometimes we, we, in our minds, we imagine how we would handle something like that, but it always happens faster and more unexpectedly and puts us in more of an incapacitated situation than we could imagine. I mean, you were, you were mauled immediately. Yes. Talk a little bit about the attack and what happened. So once I saw the, the bear, I was very, very concerned, obviously, that I was, there was going to be an encounter. Um, I ended up basically coming to a point where I grabbed my rifle instead of my bow, because the bow is not a, a good choice, but I ended up having to stand my ground as she charged. Um, I shot the thing right in the face and it didn't do anything. Wow. It lunged at me, I basically stuck the barrel of it in its mouth and the barrel came back and hit me in the head and then she pinned me. First bite was to my face. And uh, after that, it took my head in its mouth for uh, two different times completely. It felt like my head was in a vice. And the claws. I mean, she just ripped the back of your head and down your neck. I, I, what were you thinking during this? At this point, I was thinking two things. One, praying to God. And I knew that I had to pray because I had got to a point where there was nothing left. And the other thing was just sheer survival using all my skills, you know, within the fire department that I had learned, just surviving. And so I just interlaced my fingers over my neck and spread my legs and my elbows, and I just could not be flipped back over on my back. That was my only thing that I was trying to do. Yeah. So how, did, and this, this went on for some time. I mean, you detail it in the book. It's, I mean, I'm hurting for you as I'm reading yes, it, you know. You can't see at this point. Your right. eyes are filled with blood. Your ears are ringing. I mean, did you think you were going to die? I was convinced that I was going to die. It was, uh, I thought that first bite to my face and my neck, which opened up a hole about the size of a tennis ball, I thought my face was gone. Yeah. Literally, I couldn't see. And um, I realized after the violent head shake, after it bit into my arm and lifted me up off the ground and basically threw me, uh, I knew I was done. It was, I was gonna be basically taking on my last breath. Your brother comes from where he is to where you are, sees what's going on, and how does this, how do you get rid of this bear? Well, my brother, the Lord gave him a special, he's a brave man anyway, the Lord gave him a special measure of courage, and he was able to charge that bear. He couldn't shoot it off of me because it was in between us, mm -hmm. and the bullet might have gone through, but he charged it, and finally he got close enough that the bear dropped my leg and turned at him and said, he said the bear's face was completely covered with blood and then it charged him. 
and he was able to shoot it twice, and that still didn't kill it. It went off into the brush. Went off into yeah. the woods, yes, ma'am. So here you are. I mean, you ha you're about a mile and a mile and a half in this condition. You can't see. You're barely moving, and you've got to get back to where your boat is that delivered you to this place. And then once you get back to the boat, you're what, 10 miles from- 10 mile boat ride. 10 mile boat ride. Your cell phones are not working in this area. Correct. And uh, during this, you asked the obvious question that most people would, why God? I mean, why is this happening to me? And you kept hearing the Lord and your family speak to you saying what? They were saying, the Lord specifically says, I am not done with you and you need to fight and then he put a vision of my family right in front of me saying, Daddy, you have to fight to come home to us and gave me that vision too. Because you know, when you inspire the heart, you're capable of doing a lot of incredible things. And when the Lord inspires your heart, it just, uh, yeah, I just knew, I knew it. I wanna talk about the spiritual implications of what happened to you in this. One of the reasons that you had been a hunter, that you'd been involved in survival techniques, that you'd done really some life-threatening work over the years was because of your relationship with your dad. Yes. He left when you were, what, 10 years old? Yeah. Uh, yes, eight and years old. Eight years yes, old, ma'am. wow. And so that had left such a hole in your heart and you kept trying to be the guy that was going to make your dad love you, make your dad proud of you, without realizing it, you kind of even laid that on God. Yes. As God's child. So how did this turn things around for you? This is actually the best thing about this whole story is there is a grizzly attack. It's detailed. I will put you right there for that story. But the amazing story is what God did during that whole process to uh, save my life from a womb at eight years old, like you said. He, he completely turned it around. He showed me that I was loved. He showed me that I had always been loved. And then he overlaid the fact that that lie of the enemy that you allowed on your heart at eight years old that said that you are not worthy of love, that you have done something terribly wrong, and that your dad is left because of that was an absolute lie. And he dispelled that and he showed up when I had nothing left and said, I love you, you know I love you. Your dad has always loved you the same way. Well, and I love the way that you went back after asking God where he was. Jesus, where were you during all of this? You went all the way back to the very beginning of your life and God showed you the whole plan. Yes. Yeah, amazing. Absolutely. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> it is an incredible book and you can find out more of Greg's story. We, When I tell you we're skimming the surface, I mean we're skimming the surface. It's called Wild Awakening and listen, you're getting the first, the first info about it. It's not out until tomorrow, but it's available wherever books are sold starting tomorrow. Great gift for any one in your life, especially uh, finding out about the whys of how God loves us. Absolutely. Thank you, Greg. So nice to have you here. What a great book. Thank you very much. It's Important. been a privilege.